Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's show. You're listening to my podcast or possibly playing this back on a YouTube audio or even reading it on our blog site. We appreciate that, that you're here. I am Lori Ballin, and I have a real estate team here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We serve North Las Vegas and Henderson at the Lori Ballin team. And I am super, super passionate about lead generation. I also opened a marketing, marketing company a few years ago called Ballin Brands, and we now do marketing for real estate agents. We build uh, WordPress-powered, IDX-driven real estate agent websites, manage pay-per-click services, create blog content, and, um, and do your pay-per-click marketing. We're all out, out here to help you get more leads. Well, what, one of the things that I know about lead generation is that I don't know it all. I kind of uh, stay in my little pocket. I specialize in web leads. And I would say search engine optimization is probably number one for me, social media number two, and YouTube falling into both of those components number three. So I'm doing a lot with um, internet marketing. So I'm out interviewing real estate agents all over the nation that are doing something specific with lead generation that is helping them get more business. And I choose the people I interview because they're doing something interestingly enough um, that it's worth talking about and for some of you worth duplicating. Last week, on the last episode, I was lucky enough to have Karen Carr on the call and Karen is doing a lot of big things with video. And uh, I backed that up today by uh, inviting Sandy Williams on the call and Sandy has been doing some remarkable things with video herself. So I think this is kind of a great one-two punch here to have the two uh, podcasts back-to-back -back for those of you that are interested in getting started with video. Now, Sandy Williams is a broker associate with EXP Realty in the Sarasota, Florida area. Her 21 years in the business has included ownership in a real estate office in Indianapolis and then making a move to the Miami area where she specialized in REO sales. After living in Miami for 11 years and consistently ranking in the top five teams of all of South Florida, Sandy decided to move again. Obviously, Sandy likes to reinvent herself. Now she's living on the southwest coast of Florida, starting all over again. And when she isn't selling real estate, Sandy writes for the Sarasota Post and spends time kayaking with her husband, Hugo. Sandy, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Lori. All right, so I know um, I know you personally, which gives me an advantage to our interview. So I've I've been able to watch you grow and watch you grow in your um, in your internet marketing, and I absolutely love what you're doing with your YouTube videos, especially the ex ex explainer videos where you're telling people who are buying a home or selling a home things that they need to know specifically about the process. Um, I think your first one that I really loved was, uh, was it how to pass an FHA home inspection? I think it was, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. yeah. It was a two part, uh, it was a two part YouTube video with the breakdown of exactly what an FHA appraiser looks for. Yeah. And I loved that because um, it was very, very specific. So you're answering a very specific question, which I love that because one, it those rank better on the on the search engines and on the on, and on YouTube when you can specifically talk about something very, very niche down to a specific part of the process or to a specific buyer to a specific seller, and then you were very friendly, very light. The energy was very light. Your video wasn't fancy, but it was clear. The lighting was good. The audio was good. And you just walked everybody through the process of how to pass that FHA home inspection with, and you were actually at out at a house pointing to the visuals, not just sitting at your desk, which I also really, really liked. So what gave you the idea to make a video like that? Well, it, it was basically um, as a result of listing that property. And as we know, it, well, let's back up. The state of Florida, because our prices were so high, a lot of buyers and agents aren't prepared for FHA. Now that the market has adjusted, we've entered into the ability for a buyer to buy with FHA financing. So 
um, the particular house that I used in that case uh, was a listing of mine. And I thought, wow, what a great way to show people, not just tell them what to look for buyers and agents on, um, on an FHA property if you're going to get and secure an FHA mortgage. Absolutely. So the best content for the listeners out there that are constantly, um, you guys are constantly wondering, well, what do I make videos about? Well, what do I make, um, write blogs about? What kind of content do I create? Sandy just hit the nail on the head. She, one, used her inventory to come up with ideas. What fits the listing that she happens to have? What kind of challenges and problems are people going to run into? And the best content solves problems, answers questions, and you can get the ideas for that a lot of times just from your consumers um, asking. Now, Sandy, I, I was talking to um, my assistant, Sabrina, who I know also uh, works with you directly on some of your internet marketing. She said you've been really getting some great results lately from your video. So tell us, tell us what's happening with your YouTube channel with videos recently. Well, um, Sarasota is predominantly an area where people relocate from the north. You know, we're in a beautiful area, so people in a cold weather state want to come down here and buy property. So what I did is um, I really wanted to target market people sitting up in a winter state on their computer saying, I can't take it anymore. And so the way that we, the way I did that was through video and photos, uh, video of inside properties because I wanted to do a niche market in my neighborhood, which is new construction. And another video that is getting, I posted it two days ago right now, I have over 900 views on it, um, is a drone video of the neighborhood with all the amenities that my niche has. Is that the Del Webb at Lakewood, Lakewood Ranch one? Correct. Yeah, I see that. Beautiful. How much did that drone video cost? Uh, like $200 maybe. And then um, I, I really don't have the patience to brand the photo. So I put it on Fiverr and it was branded for $6. Love that. So how much time, what did it actually take you to produce that video besides money? which isn't a lot. Absolutely nothing. Uh, I, I did meet the drone pilot out, but it's the same drone pilot I always use. Uh, so I look at him as a potential because he talks to agents every single day, right? Because that's what he does. So I wanted to walk him through the facility as well. So I spent maybe 20 minutes. Maybe 20 minutes. Okay. And then, um, are you, are you putting these on your website after you're putting the video on YouTube? Correct. So on this particular one of the Dell Web community, we actually have a Facebook group. So I posted that first. I posted the drone video on our Dell Web Facebook group and it just became viral. There's, um, we're in the process of building, so there's only 200 homes, but almost 90% of the people as a member of that Facebook group looked at the video, commented, and then I had probably 10 shares from residents that posted it on their own. So I always, uh, this particular one, since it is a niche, I have a, a showcase page on, on uh, my website and then I link the video back in there. And then if you look at the YouTube video, you'll see the link um, that directs them back to my website. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm playing it now. I've got it on mute just so that I can make sure we're not hearing anything. Absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous community. The drone captured it. I mean, amazing. You just could not get this kind of a video just from taking standard images. Although you could get a bunch of great images and put those in a slideshow or something. The drone absolutely just takes it to a whole nother level. I really, I really like yeah. it. Are you doing... Are you doing drone on um, your listings as well? Yes, um, uh, especially we have great areas in um, Sarasota and Bradenton that back up to a lot of nature preserves. And so sometimes you don't even know how big it is, how big that nature preserve is until you have a video done. So there's several on my YouTube, once again, of um, homes for sale with 
I mean, one of them backs up to about a mile of nature preserve. And I even live on, I used to live on that street. Nobody knew how big that was until we actually shot it. Yeah. Oh, there's your video. Okay. So now I'm on, um, you know, I, I'm curious about something how, on your, on your Dell web at Lakewood ranch one. Um, oh, you have, it looks like you have two videos up there. I just want to see. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. You've also got a video where you're standing there talking about Lakewood ranch where you're, so you've done two for that community. Right. The first one I did was a model home, um, of, of a, you know, of a particular house that you could build in uh, Del Webb at Lakewood Ranch. And that one is actually within the last week, there's over a thousand views on that. And I actually got a sale off of that video last week. How did that, how did that work? So did the person call you and say, I'm watching your YouTube video or did they register for IDX and then say, how did that go? Um, they actually called me and said, Hey, I, it was, I, um, I saw your video of the house in Del Webb and then I went on your website and I actually read your article about why you should use a realtor when you build new construction. And you're absolutely right. I, would you be my realtor, uh, to buy a house in Del Webb? Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. You know, the, the thing with, with video, and I was saying this on the interview I did with Karen as well, is that people do business with people they know or think they know. And there's something about video that creates a likability factor and a, a feeling like they can trust you or like you. And so a lot of times you actually pass up that whole interview process because they've are, you've already positioned yourself as an expert in real estate. You've positioned yourself as an authority on your market and uh, in, the, in the other case on new construction. And so they, they don't need to ask you a million questions after they've watched your videos. They've, they're already ready to go to the next level because that kind of was your interview process. Absolutely. And, and what you said about coming as an authoritative figure in new construction, it, the, even the blog just really paid off and linking, always linking back with your video, uh, linking back to your website. I mean, otherwise I w she may have never found me, looked at the video and just moved on, but then she went into my website and looked around. Yeah. You're doing exactly what I like to do, which is multi-channel marketing. I, I always say, you know, in two in in this in this age right now, the the late two thousands, two thousand eighteen, we are in a, a, an age where you could just do a big business off of Facebook. You could just do a big business off YouTube. You could do a big business off Snapchat or Instagram or your website or whatever. But when you can use them all the channels to cross reference back and forth to each other, that's always going to be an advantage because what you can do is you create your video, you put it on YouTube. And now the people that are actually loving video or that are on YouTube doing searches or that are, might be on the search engine and they find your video, you're, you're appealing to that audience, but then to have a link over to your blog. Now you've got all of this written content where you're giving them information that they can, that they can further read. And then you can use social media to, at, or, or pay-per-click marketing to advertise your video that's on your blog post. So all of this multi-channel marketing I know is what you're doing that, that helps you capture more leads. Absolutely. And it, it's paying off. I can't tell you that it's something that's automatic or right away. It's something that you nurture and you feed and then the results just happen. Right. Are you, are you, do you have any kind of schedule with um, how often you make videos or is it just based on when you're inspired? How does that kind of work for you? The videos, the videos are actually becoming more of a schedule because of the feedback that I'm getting. It's just being reinforced. So for example, we're going to do a video again this week. So my goal now that I have the groove of editing, um, finding somebody to edit and brand, which I definitely didn't want to take that endeavor on. And then finding Fiverr, which is super good, fast and cheap. 
um, allows me to go do more video and then just do the handoff and, and just keep going. So my goal for the next, for now till the end of the year is one video a month. Okay, one a month. And I, and I, I like to ask people because I want everybody to understand, you know, I'm making a video every day or more than one a day on my tutorial style videos because that's what I have the time and the energy to do. That's my main focus. Karen is doing one video a week and that's what she has time and energy and focus to do. And Sandy's now doing one a month. And so the point is just doing it and creating a, a process that works for you. You might start off with, you know, one a quarter and one a month and then to one a week and, and, and maybe more from there. But you definitely want to have some sort of consistency. I'm, I'm addressing my listeners there. Um, Sandy, tell me more about the about Fiverr. So um, for those that don't know, uh, how do they get on Fiverr? Um, it's I believe I, it's it's a website. And Lori, is it um, F-I-V-E-R-R? -R? Right. I believe at fiverr.com you can set up your profile you can put a bid in basically saying this is what i'm looking for people bid the job go in and check out their experience because and 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 the reviews i think that's very important and then um when you find somebody that's doing a good job keep them and tip them and they'll remember you. And I, so now I have uh, the person that brands my videos. It's six bucks. I usually tip her five dollars. Um, and then I also have somebody that act, that will break down my videos for me and edit them. And that's less than twenty dollars. Okay, let's go back on those processes right there. So first step is you were looking for somebody to specifically edit your video. And what does that mean? Were they just putting in an intro and an outro or what did that editing include for six bucks? Well, um, well the, the editing of the video is 20 and that includes, so the videos are made with myself and my husband. So my husband shoots them. We have a gimbal and I have a lapel microphone and we just shoot, for example, the one in Dell Webb of the model home. We just shot that, that was a one take video. And of course there were things, you know, maybe he had too much closet video or we didn't need to make the video so long. So uh, we go to Fiverr, bid out editing the video, meaning chop it, cut it, put it back together and um, brand it. So um, so it's done sequentially and and that's what we get. So the editing was 20. Hold on one second. How, so I'm gonna break this down so that everybody understands the exact process. So you're bidding it out. So you're create. you're not just going in there and picking somebody, uh, one of these gigs that say, I'll do this for you for five bucks. You're actually going in there and placing this order and telling them what you want that these other people are coming in and then bidding on. How do you, how do you know, are you actually breaking down? I want less closet. I want this edited. How, how do they know what to edit to your liking? Yeah, um, because when I use an iPhone, so I'll load it up into iMovie. So I have a pretty good idea of where in the minutes it needs to be cut. So I'll say, hey, minute number or second number 42nd cut out all of the closet, you know, the closet oh, film. Is that um, in the bid? Is that in the bid or is that after somebody has accepted the bid? After somebody has accepted the bid, because to me, it's important to go back and look at their reviews, look at, did they deliver on time? You know, also one of the things that you want to look for is did they understand english language is language language their first or their second not that that's a problem but communication is important when you're editing a video on where it needs to be cut so they just have to understand basics gotcha okay so you're putting in this bid that says basically i i want this video edited down to a do, do you have a copy or would you be willing to send me a copy of kind of like what your bid request would look sure. like that might help sure. everybody so they i've never even done a, a place to bid on fiverr so that's that's a new one for me um I've, i bought things from fiverr but i've never bid out a project and now of course that's got my wheels turning about a million things i could probably do i could probably I, put in. 
Okay. I love it. And I bid out all kinds of stuff now. I mean, you name it, I bid it out, whether it's a flyer, a PDF, um, anything. I, I don't, I leverage all of that out. What happens if you bid it out and you don't like the results? What happens with Fiverr? You can get a revision. Uh, you don't pay for it until you're happy. So you, you can get a revision once, twice, three times. It depends. Look at the bid uh, because I always put in there, I want a minimum of two revisions, the option for two revisions without additional fees. So that's why it's important to read the reviews on how that person communicates with the orders. Gotcha. So you can you can rate and review the person that you use. And right. then how how does tipping work? You said you're tipping them. Is that a customary process on Fiverr? It'll ask you at the end once you pay, would you like to tip them? And honestly, five dollars to brand a video or six dollars is so cheap. Uh, I just feel and and this past one, it was done in less than twenty four hours. There was one revision. She was super fast. I mean, oh, why? If that was such good service. Why would you not want to tip? Yeah. Did you say you're getting transcripts from there as well? No, but you know, Lori, after uh, watching one of your uh, videos about transcripts, I, I probably will bid that out and see how they do it. I haven't done that yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing. And now I'm curious about this. I may have my content manager give this a whirl because. Um, we are, gosh, we're producing so much video. It's ridiculous. And our, our transcript bill is really high. We're, uh, we're, we pay it, pay, pay as we go. It's not a pending bill, but it's, it's huge because it's a dollar a minute from when we, from rev.com. Now for a five minute video, it's five bucks, five bucks, five bucks, but my entire team's producing video every day. And it's get, it gets to be quite a, a lot. And my interviews like this, your interview will be 30 minutes will be $30. So I'm wondering now if I could get a great person on Fiverr that could transcribe all of our videos, probably for a fraction of that. I, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, just to look in there, I mean, it's worth just going in there and checking out all the services. Yeah, I, I had a, um, I had a whiteboard video done uh, that was uh, that I use for my listing presentations, especially since once again our clients aren't here. So our clients are all around the world and they own property here, but they don't live here. So uh, one of the things that I do is a whiteboard listing presentation, just basically an intro about myself. And uh, I did a whiteboard uh, with voiceover uh, for a hundred bucks. Wow. And those things are so expensive. I mean, On whiteboard five explanatory videos are $500. I mean, the, and up, that's really fantastic. I know I've done a lot of fun things. I haven't been on here in a long time, so this inspires me. Now I want to go on there and play a little bit and see what I can find. But, you know, it, 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 what I love about what you said isn't even just Fiverr, although that's probably the best takeaway of the of the call. I think um, what, you're, what I'm hearing you say, though, is leverage that out, regardless of who's doing it for you. I mean, your job, your best time spent when it comes to video is doing the video because that's the hardest part. That's why people don't want to, they don't want to do, people don't want to do video because they don't want to be on the video. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to come up with the topics. They, there's a million reasons why people don't do the video. And so it's the most untapped. I mean, it's the, it's the most untapped opportunity out there in my opinion right now in the real estate industry is video. And, and, and especially what you're doing with the coupled of the, I love your listing videos i love your neighborhood videos that dell web one is fantastic the um explain explanatory explanatory videos actually being on site at a house oh my gosh i just absolutely love that and that's going to set you apart and create it and help you dominate your market because other people aren't willing to do that what you've done very very intelligently is you said i don't want to sit and do the editing neither do i by the way i hate editing and so you're like, no, I'm going to sub that out and I'm going to find an affordable way to do that so I can just go back and, and make more videos and be out in the field with those customers when they call and say, hey, come list me or come, come represent me. So you know where your strength is, you know where you want to be and you're leveraging out those other parts. Now, I will tell you that getting taking this another level and doing the transcripts on like your um, explanatory videos, if you and and. 
And maybe we can find somebody on Fiverr to do some of this stuff too, like the SEO optimization, the SEO part of it, where they go in and create the internal links and put in the SEO stuff. But if you would take like your, your, of course, you're already creating articles around your videos anyway, so you, you might not even need the transcript if you're writing an article. The transcript, oh. really, the transcript really comes into play to use as the basis for your article, like to optimize as if it were a blog post. But if you're already creating an article around that, you don't necessarily need the transcript. Well, and I, I think the transcripts are great because some, some people watch you know, on their cell phone and, and won't necessarily read the article. I just found that when I put an article, when I write a blog post and then put the video in, it's amazing when you look at like Hotjar, for example, and you look at all the clicks uh, of the video, you know they work. People like to watch video. They do. What Sandy just said, for those of you that don't know, is she uses a, a heat map software like I do called Hotjar. And what Hotjar does is it actually takes a screenshot of your page and then it measures where people click and interact with the page. So where do they scroll? Where do they exit? And where do they click? And we can physically see that the videos on the page are getting a high percentage of the interaction. And what video does also, if you put embed it on your website, is it's going to increase dwell time, which is how long that person sits on your, on your page and on your website which it's debatable whether or not that's a direct ranking factor with Google. What we do know is it's a quality indicator when somebody spends more time on your page and on your website. Also, the longer play time you get on your videos, the longer watch time, the higher you rank on your YouTube channel. So when you take those vid videos and embed them on your blog post and somebody's sitting there and they press play on the video and they're looking at the blog post at the same time, and you're getting more watch time in that video, it's gonna help you rank higher on your YouTube channel as well. So again, that cross channel marketing, you're getting some extra, um, extra exposure there on both engines, which is incredibly powerful. So is there any other equipment or software or anything that you're using? So you're, I love your tip about Fiverr. I think that, like I said, the takeaway, the call, that was fantastic. Is there anything else that you got the drones? That was another takeaway for me. I've never done anything yet with drones myself. So now I'm thinking about bidding that out, seeing if I can get some drones over Summerlin out here. That's a killer idea. Um, and where did you find your drone guy? Um, they are the ones that actually uh, do the interior photos, and I, I use Matterport as well um, on certain homes, once again, because people don't live here. So if I can give them the experience of being here without really being here, I have a better chance of selling the house if they're setting up in Connecticut. Um, one of the other things, so I use a company called 10X. I believe that they're they're not just in Florida. I, I believe they're in certain parts of the United States. So check them out. They offer Matterport, uh, drone videos, and inside videos of the home, as well as still shots. Yeah, I just saw them the other day. Somebody added me to the, a Facebook group that they manage, uh, another real estate marketer. So, okay, and software, you said, iMovie, although you're not doing the editing yourself, you've got a lapel mic, you use your iPhone and a... Uh, um, a gimbal to hold the iPhone steady. Your husband's doing that. Is there anything else? Any other any other software equipment we didn't mention? Uh, the only other thing we'll use sometimes if we don't have a lot of natural light is we actually have a um, a light source that we carry around with us. If for some reason wherever we're shooting, especially inside a house, I think on the FHA video I was in the garage. Um, you probably can't tell it's 120 degrees in the garage in July in Florida <laughs> um, and so we had to make it quick but it's dark in there so we used a portable light source just a you know something that stands on a on a tripod and you can plug in gives you a little bit of extra light and that's it that, that's all it's simple it's easy you know let's not complicate it it's it, I think the gimbal really makes it look a, a lot more professional because it's a steady movement of um of the video and, and that's it it doesn't have to be expensive it just has to be you that's right it does not have to be expensive it just has to be that's a hundred percent just showing up just showing up and getting it done is half the battle right there and like i said that most people won't do so it truly gives you gives you the advantage and and i'm going to encourage you sandy to keep going and keep doing these because i think you're 
I think you're very natural on camera too. And I think the more you do this right now, while it's untapped opportunity, the more you can take advantage of dominating the market through, through your videos. So, um, whatever it is that you can do, I'm just going to encourage you to do more <laughs> because, okay. because you're just in right in the pocket right now. You're right in the pocket. I want to see you just kill it on that. Cause you're, you're so natural and you've just kind of got it all together. So just increasing the amount would probably be a huge benefit to you. So, well, thank you so much. Sandy's one of our brew clients. She has a Ballon real estate website and she's a, a natural marketer. So we love having her on. And if you'd like to keep Sandy in mind for your referrals, she's in Sarasota. You can find her at sarasotasandy.com, serving Southwest Florida, Gulf Coast, the cities of Sarasota, Bradenton, and the Barrier Islands. And Sandy also still sells in Miami as well. So Sandy, I will make sure all of your information is in our write-up so that they can contact you. And um, one final piece of advice before we let you go, what would you leave everybody with? You know what, just do it and don't overthink the process because video is easy. Don't critique yourself. Everybody's human. Just go out and do it. I agree 100%. All right. Thank you, Sandy. It was a pleasure to have you and I look forward to getting this out in the next couple of weeks and sharing with all of our listeners. Thanks, Lori. Good Bye. talking to you. Bye. Bye.